In 1985, Joe Dante's The Explorers flew its way onto the big screen. Now regarded as a treasured cult classic and an important part of many people's childhoods who grew up in the 80s, it's a coming-of-age story about three young teenage boys who build their own backyard spaceship after receiving information on how to do so in their dreams where the boys learn that an advanced alien race is trying to make contact with them. Where they do the ultimate dream of any kid, they go on an adventure in outer space. Released during the craze of E.T. and the Goonies, The Explorers is yet another fun child adventure full of excitement and wonder, with an impressive cast including Ethan Hawke, River Phoenix, and... Um that guy, and not forgetting of course my main man Dick Miller, who seemed to appear in all of Joe Dante's films, along with an exciting and wonderful score by Jerry Goldsmith. So today we are going to leave orbit and check out 10 things that you may not know about The Explorers. The movie that proves that even kids can build spaceships in their very own backyards. So buckle up and strap yourself in the Thunder Road as we check it out. Number 10. Ethan Hawke wouldn't star in another movie until years later. In Explorers, Ethan Hawke plays main protagonist Ben Crandall. Although nowadays, Ethan Hawke is a huge mainstream actor, it was a lot different back in those innocent days of 1985, as due to the account that he was 13, Hawke's mother didn't actually want him to star in the movie, despite the fact she let him audition for the role. Hawke's stepdad stepped in and said it was unfair to allow the young lad to audition for the part but to not let him actually take part in the movie. But Ethan's mother was worried as her son starring in the movie meant that he would have to stay in LA for filming, which would interfere with his mother's job. So naturally after filming, Ethan's mother told him not to star in any more movies till he was older, and thus he wouldn't star in another movie until 1989's Dead Poet Society. Number 9. Explorers almost had a different director. Originally, German director Wolfgang Peterson was going to direct The Explorers. It would have seemed like a wise choice as just one year prior, Peterson had directed the smash hit children's fantasy movie, The Neverending Story. However, things didn't go as planned as Peterson wanted to film Explorers in his native country, in Bavaria where he had previously filmed The NeverEnding Story, but Paramount Pictures wanted The Explorers to feel like an all-American movie, filmed in American suburbia, and were worried that if the movie was filmed in Germany, in the same studio as Peterson's previous adventure movie, then Explorers would just look and feel like The NeverEnding Story. So instead, Paramount hired Joe Dante, who one year prior had a smash hit with the Christmas monster movie Gremlins, which too was an unstoppable massive success, and allowed the explorers to utilize Dante's unique and quirky vision. It makes perfect sense, really. I mean, if you can't get the director of the never-ending story for your movie, then get the director of Gremlins instead. Still, I do wonder if the fact that the original director was Wolfgang Peterson had something to do with why the River Phoenix character is called Wolfgang Muller. Number 8. Teenage Rivalry The movie starred Amanda Peterson as a sort of teenage love interest for Ethan Hawke's Ben character. Peterson would go on to star in the teen romantic comedy Can't Buy Me Love a few years after The Explorers. However, it was while filming Explorers that the young actress caught the eye of both Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix, as behind the scenes, the two young actors were in a rivalry trying to win Peterson's affections, and were both pursuing her. So the big question is, in this teenage love triangle, which one of the two young actors would win Peterson's affections? Well, according to director Joe Dante, it was Ethan Hawke. But who knows? However, sadly, Peterson died a few years ago in 2015, to which Dante would go on to describe as a downer, and further said the actress was very sweet. And the tragic irony being, in 1993, River Phoenix also sadly passed away. 
However, 1985 will always be an innocent time when a teenage love triangle took place. Man, you've got to feel sorry for River Phoenix. It always sucks to never get the girl. It was probably because he was playing a nerd. Which leads me to my next point. Number 7. River Phoenix wasn't happy with his role. So, yeah, River Phoenix didn't want the part of the nerdy character Wolfgang Muller. And to be fair, the character was a stereotypical movie geek, complete with big glasses, lab coat, woolly sweaters and ties. Phoenix really wanted the part of Darren Woods, who was a slightly more rebellious dark horse character, which to be fair was definitely more suited to Phoenix's persona. He wanted to be the bad boy who steals beers off his dad, not the geek who is all sciency and gets picked on by everyone. But young actor Jason Preeson was cast in the role of Darren. However, the following year Phoenix finally got to play the role that best suited him as the bad boy with a heart of gold Chris Chambers in Stand By Me, which was definitely his breakout performance. Whereas Preeson kind of fell off the radar, as the only other acting role I've seen him in after The Explorers was a cameo in Gremlins 2. Number 6. Deleted Scenes There is a well-known deleted scene where on his way to school, Ben looks up into the window of his teen crush Laurie's room as she's getting ready for school, proving that even 13-year-olds can be creepy stalkers. The odd thing is, this scene was actually in the movie in the VHS edition, or at least it was in Australia. But there are other not so well-known deleted scenes, one including a subplot where the aliens give the boys some kind of magical MacGuffin, where when the boys return to Earth, they use the device on the school bully, which makes all his clothes disappear. Which I'm glad wasn't in the movie as it just sounds wrong. And there was going to be a scene taking place at a party at the end of the film, where Ben and Laurie share a kiss. There was even an entire subplot removed which would have explored all living things being part of the same consciousness. The final movie does tap into this somewhat, with the plot about aliens communicating telepathically with the boys in their dreams. But the philosophy was going to be further explored in the movie, and even shows the Dick Miller character, Charlie Drake, to share this psychic connection with the boys too. Had this subplot stayed in, then it would have taken explorers into spiritual territories. Which, looking back in hindsight, would have been weird. Number 5. Joe Dante hated the movie's poster. I got to be honest, I actually really like the poster for The Explorers. It has mystery and intrigue and has that certain 80s magical look about it. It shows that something spectacular is happening in an otherwise mundane neighbourhood. And of course, the light is going into the stars, suggesting that a space adventure is going to be taking place. Not to mention, of course, the use of the BMX bikes. Oh yeah, thanks to E.T., 1980s kids' movies were all about BMX bikes. However, the movie's director, Joe Dante, seems to really dislike this poster. He didn't like the fact that the movie's poster declared that it's a movie from the director of The Gremlins. And he said, quote, It just looked awful. And even compared it to looking like tar paper, especially when the poster was put up on billboards. There was another poster used for certain parts of the world, but I'm not a fan of this poster. It just looks cartoony and silly. I like to think this poster represents the first part of the movie, before they find the aliens, and this one represents the second half when they're on the alien spaceship. Number 4. The movie is set in the same universe as Gremlins. The Explorers is full of pop cultural references. These include the rosebud sled from Citizen Kane is in the junkyard, the movie being shown at the drive-in is an obvious parody of Star Trek, the flying scenes were shot in a way that was meant to mimic Peter Pan, the line, there here is used, which is a reference to Poltergeist, and the spaceship is called the Thunder Road, which the movie even says is named after the Bruce Springsteen song. But the most interesting pop cultural reference, and the one that is the most easiest to miss, is a scene where we see a close-up of a newspaper, which has a tiny article which reads, Kingston Falls Riot Still Unexplained. Yep, it's official! Gremlins and Explorers have a shared universe. 
Kingston Falls is the town from gremlins that get destroyed by the little monsters. And I've mentioned in the past that there is evidence here and there that many Spielberg related movies seem to have a shared universe like E.T., The Goonies, Gremlins, Back to the Future, and Poltergeist, and so on, which I refer to as the Spielberg-verse. So I guess despite the fact that Explorers isn't Spielberg-related, we can still add it to that list. Number three, the movie was never completed. From the beginning, The Explorers was a rush job. Paramount seemed to want the movie out as quickly as possible. Sadly, this meant that Dante's vision he had of the movie could never be fully realized. Dante was still working on editing the movie and the final touches when the studio took over and told Dante his services were no longer required as they were going to release the movie as it was, without Dante completing it. So interestingly enough, what we are left with is an unfinished product, of which the director never got to perfect to his standards. Dante was disappointed with the final product, and he felt like his true vision of the movie was never fully realized and lost in translation. Wow, I'm intrigued with what the movie would have been like had Dante been able to complete his vision of the movie. Number two, the movie was a major flop when it came out. Despite the fact that The Explorers is a cult classic with a huge adoring fan base, when the movie first came out, it tanked at the box office. There was so much promise to Explorers, considering it had the director of Gremlins, Joe Dante, attached to it in his prime, and it had the irresistible premise of being a fun coming-of-age space movie. I mean, what could go wrong? Well, sadly, no one went to see it. Ethan Hawke described the movie's failure as devastating, as he said that he thought the movie he was starring in was going to be the next E.T., but that wasn't the case, and he overall felt disappointed in the whole ordeal. He even said that when he returned to high school, he got picked on for starring in the movie. It's a shame that both Ethan Hawke and Joe Dante don't seem to be too fond of Explorers, or be that the experience of making Explorers. But it's okay guys, it's okay to cut the movie some slack and to like it and be proud of it as the movie has actually been a magical part of many people's childhoods and many people still really love it. But regardless, in 1985 when kids adventure movies were ripe, what with it being the day and age of E.T. and Goonies, just why on earth did the movie fail? Well that leads me to my number one point. Number one, The Explorers was defeated by Live Aid. Paramount Pictures were in a mad rush to get the movie out as soon as possible, and this seemed to be the movie's biggest undoing, as the movie was released on July the 12th, 1985, the same week Live Aid was broadcast, and the huge rock concert strayed people's attention from the world of cinema and got them talking about the poverty crisis in Africa instead. So basically, Live Aid dominated the popular zeitgeist of that week. Yes indeed, people weren't interested in watching three young boys going on a space adventure in their homemade spaceship, but instead wanted to see Queen, U2, Madonna and David Bowie perform some tunes to help make poverty history. So, had the Explorers been released just one week earlier, or one week later, it may have changed the movie's box office performance, but we may never know. Well guys, that was my look into Explorers. The movie has charm and imagination. In my opinion though, it does fall off the rails a bit when the aliens come into the movie and it does go into cartoon territories and makes the movie lose its otherworldliness and mystery that it had building up. But hey, that's just my opinion. But it's still a good movie and worth checking out if you're a fan of those kids movies from the 80s like Goonies and Monsters Squad. Anyway, I'm Minty. And The Explorers is probably the only movie ever to have an alien singing the Mr. Ed theme. See ya!